you've seen a big shift in 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 how catching is viewed since your first coaching opportunity in 1966. And by the way, I think I said 66 years. That would have made a a coach out of you at age 12. So it was actually <laughs> actually I, I was yeah. coaching teams at 15. <laughs> probably was. So it's actually what 63 years. So I was close by accident. Um, but let's talk about what the non negotiables of of sec, uh, excuse me, successful catching are, and then maybe we can talk afterwards about what you know what has changed dramatically. But for you, what hasn't changed since 1966? What are the non-negotiables of the catchers that you know that you you want behind the plate for the big game? Well, for me, it's it's a defensive first first position, and and that's the one thing that you have to understand because there's so many. If if you're going to really be good, especially at the big league level, at the professional level, the preparation time that you have to spend on your defense, just preparing for each individual pitcher against each individual hitter, it's insurmountable. So you're, the time spent, the time that you have to spend offensively is, is not as limitless as it is for say uh, an infielder or an outfielder because, and also physically the position is very demanding legs, hands, you're beat up, you're tired, you're, you're uh, uh, depleted, uh, uh, energy depleted and, and electrolyte depleted and, and you name it. And, and, uh, and, and also uh, you have a target on your back. Uh, yeah. You're touching the ball probably a hundred plus times a game. And when something goes wrong, uh, they're and the, the, the pitchers sometimes are a little sensitive, and so they know the catchers have a thick skin. So why did you call that pitch, or why didn't you block that pitch, or you know? So and I'm not being paranoid, but the, there is somewhat of a target on your back as a catcher. So there are, that that defensive piece and being a tough guy and 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 it's it, it's like a combination of a point guard and a quarterback and a middle linebacker. You're you're in charge. You're in control. Uh, on a given day, uh, winning and losing is determined by three people: the pitcher, the catcher, and the umpire. And the catcher impacts two of those guys, and the pitcher's only out there. The starting pitcher's only out there every fifth day. You're out there every day. So the demands, physically and intellectually, are are tremendous. And there's lots of opportunities to be successful, but there are also lots of opportunities to be unsuccessful as well. And and uh, you know, I always told the pitchers, Hey, we win today. I get half a win. You get half a loss <laughs> or half a win. And, and they don't, they're, they're more than happy to share half of the loss with you, but not so much half the win. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's so I, funny. As, you were, as you were describing like all the different responsibilities, I was like, you know what? I just realized I don't think I've ever seen a catcher on anything except for the early bus. They're always on the first bus to the field. Doesn't matter who's catching that day, but it's just, there's too much to do. Well, you know, aside from getting treatment and looking at videos and and talking to the pitching coach and talking to the manager and doing your own uh, maintenance program for your your skill set and and then trying to get a little time in the cage and guys throwing sides and if you don't catch him, you certainly want to be out there and watch him to see what he's working on or what the stuff looks like and to talk with him and to bond with him and and to prove you know it's a, you have to have a servant mentality. Uh, it's it's a it's a pretty demand yeah. it's a pretty demanding job and it's a pretty pretty significant job because if you look at the the run saved just based on receiving the better guys they're responsible for three or four wins a year which is like nine million dollars a win and I don't think we're getting paid thirty six million dollars a year to catch. It's a good point. There aren't many out there, but they're they're so impactful. And you're right, just the simple fact they're involved on every play is huge. You know, maybe building on that last one that you know you talked about the non-negotiables of you know servant mentality and defense first. What do you think the most valuable trait a catcher can really offer their team is? Is it is it an actual is it anything relating to those metrics or is it purely the leadership, the game calling, that aspect of it? Well, it's it's everything and it's about his his impact on the pitcher. What just the way he puts his signals down, the way the preparation is, the way he pitch calls. Is that going to make that pitcher more committed, more confident, uh, more trusting in this pitch that he throws? That will give him the best chance to execute that pitch. And pitch execution is everything. I mean, and it's more it's more about the execution of the pitch than than the stuff uh, for me. And and that's where the catcher comes in. I mean, it's a is a significant um, uh, a marriage between those two guys. They really depend upon one another. 
uh, the, the catcher depends upon that pitcher to trust him, and the pitcher depends upon that catcher to be prepared and, and to, to lead him in the right direction in, in a lot of cases. Now, if you have your Bob Gibsons or your Max Scherzers and guys like that, uh, they're pretty self-sufficient, and uh, the catching is somewhat secondary, even though uh, guys yeah. like, um, like Greg Maddox, he, he, he had the guy he wanted to catch him because yeah. he trusted that guy. And so it should just shows you how important that guy becomes in the life of that starting pitcher. And, and again, winning and losing that starting pitcher is key in today's game. 